Sister Donna, and I just want to welcome all of you to Ladies Bible Class. Today is dedicated to God first, 
but also to honoring Southwestern Christian College, our college for our kids. We want to celebrate Christian education. Now, raise your hands if you have enjoyed reading through the Bible, because that's what we've been doing. We've been wonderfully just, just bathing in God's Word. And we get the opportunity to study some of the women in the Bible who have their names written in the Book of Life. This month, we have selected Esther for our ladies' Bible class. And indeed, it is for such a time as this. It is for such a time as this with Southwestern Christian College. You know, we've watched our kids grow up. And we watched one of our young ladies grow up and go off to Southwestern Christian College and do us proud. She will be our MC for this ladies Bible class. Please welcome with me our little big-eyed <laughs> little angel who went off. Her name is Ariel Comer. Good morning, ladies. It is with great pleasure and honor that I stand before you today representing Southwestern Christian College. I, like Sister Silman said, I was a member here, still am a member here. This is where my family attends church. And I left Houston in 2011 to attend Southwestern. And I just have to say, I had the time of my life. It was a great institution. I'm glad that I was able to experience that. I was crowned homecoming queen in 2011. After that, I was able to go on summer tour traveling across the country. And I will just say that Southwestern is the, the land of opportunity. Um, I hope that you came here today with an open mind about the school. Um, hopefully you're able to support the school in any and every way that you can because Southwestern needs your support. Students, you have to send your students, send your children, send your grandchildren because it is a wonderful institution. So next up will be Sister Donna Miller and after that there will be a prayer from Miss Kathy Powers and the next voice you will hear from that will be that of Miss Marge Miller. Thank you. Okay, the next song that I chosen for today would be I Really Love the Lord because I really do. And that is a favorite song of mine. And um, we'll just get started on that. I really love the Lord. I Now in him I abide 
Good morning, ladies. Shall we stand, please? Let us bow. Dear gracious and wonderful and heavenly Father, we come to you and just being grateful and thankful for this glorious day that we have never seen before. The Lord bless us as we encourage and uplift the school, Southwestern Christian College, this week. Be with all of us. Teach us. Encourage us as women, mother, friends, and just bless us. Heavenly Father, today, please be with us as we continue with this service, that it be just a blessing to us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Marjorie Miller, and I attend Southwestern Christian College. Do you know what? God works in mysterious ways. Yes, he does. Throughout the whole time I was in high school, I already knew what I wanted to do in life and what schools I wanted to go to to accomplish my future endeavors. After graduating high school, I was planning to go to Texas Southern University. I got accepted in everything but God. But God turned all my plans around. Yeah. At that very moment, I knew it was not what I wanted to do, but what God had planned and in store for me. I can proudly say that Southwestern Christian College was the best choice I've ever made. Yeah. Southwestern made a great impact in my life. Uh, it, being away from home, it really showed me how I grown spiritually and mentally as a child of God. While I'm at Southwest, I got involved in many clubs, organizations, and volunteering throughout the city of Terra. In fact, I was also crowned as Miss Homecoming Queen for raising the most funds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's so much you can learn from Southwestern, and you will never experience at a four-year university. Also, Southwest is a brown and strong era. But it's up to you to make the right decision when you get there, and that's what I saw fit to do. So not only do you get the education and spiritual food that we need, you get to meet new people all over the world. While we're meeting and making new friends, we are growing the relationship as brothers and sisters. That's right, we become a big family. Yes, we'll face our ups and downs while we're missing our families back at home, but that's where the second family will come in to place, and we're there for each other. So even though we'll graduate and go our separate ways, we'll always be the Mighty Ram family. Now I'm going to introduce a young lady that is a wonderful child of God. She's a member of the Sisterhood of Kappa Phi Delta. She was also in summer tour 2013-2014. She's a great role model, and I wish I can be like her one day. This young lady was crowned as Miss Homecoming Queen and Miss Southwestern. She had passed her crown to me as Miss Homecoming Queen of 2013. So please help me welcome Miss Kendrea Billups. Hello ladies. My name is Kendrea Billups and I bring you greetings from Southwestern Christian College by way of Grand Rapids, Michigan. I pray that all is well and you've come with open hearts and minds to the heartfelt words that I have prepared for you today. I'd like to thank God for allowing, me this, for allowing me to live another day so that I may be able to stand in front of you ladies today. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Sister Tillman and all who worked with her to allow me this opportunity. I'd like to speak to you on the topic of being queens for such a time as this. I'd first like to start by reading you a passage from Esther, chapter 4, verses 12 through 14. I'm reading from the message. When Hathach told Mordecai what Esther had said, Mordecai sent her this message. Don't think that just because you live in, this, live in the king's house, you're the one Jew who will get out of this alive. If you persist in staying silent at a time like this, Help and deliverance will arrive for Jews for, from someone else. But you and your family will be wiped out. Who knows? Maybe you are made queen for just such a time as this. I'd like to start by 
sharing my background at Southwestern Christian College. As Marjay said, like many others, my plan wasn't to attend Southwestern. I had made up in my mind that I was going to further my education at Oklahoma Christian University. But as both you and I can see, I was wrong. <laughs> God made it very clear to me that my plans doesn't matter, but it's his plans that's most important. Being the baby of three children, some may associate me with being spoiled. And saying that when it came down to taking care of important information and dealing with certain people, I never had to because there was always someone there to do it for me. Coming to Southwestern, I quickly showed, it quickly showed me how to grow up and take care of my own responsibilities. The, tra the transition was hard, but I managed to get through it with God's help. In coming to Southwestern, I became my own person. But in becoming my own person, I had to endure a few obstacles, which helped me to build a stronger relationship with God. My spirituality got so much stronger. It seemed as if I was on a spiritual high every day, but then life started happening. In saying that, I mean, I came to a point where I felt stagnant in my spiritual growth. I was going through the flow of being a Christian. You know, many of us go through that flow at some point in our life. Yeah. Instead of actually having a connection with God, given the fact that I didn't have a connection with God, it seemed like things began to grow, go wrong day by day. I felt like so many people were against me because it seemed as if I never got a sincere, kind word. It was like people look forward to breaking my spirits down. On top of all this, I get a call from home saying my grandfather passed away. That's when I began to give up on my education. Over a course of time, my 3.6 GPA went down to a 2.7, and that was a big step for me. <laughs> I could go on for days on how everything I felt went wrong, but with a short period of time, life happened, and I didn't know how to handle things. It was until I wanted to get the closer relationship with God that I got out of that, that state of depression. In the midst of all these ob obstacles, I was given opportunity. Sorry. In the midst of all these obstacles, I was given opportunities. These opportunities helped me to become a better person and have a better mindset as a whole. Opportunities such as being president of Kappa Phi Delta which is a group of young ladies striving to be successful women of God. Young women who strive to ex exemplify Proverbs 31.30, where it says, Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And then I went on to becoming president of Chorus, which is one of the most important attributes to Southwestern Christian College, because we not only raise money, but we go and minister through song throughout states. Within Chorus, I was a member of Summer Tour, which is a group of 12 that gives up their summer and dedicates part of their school year to raise funds for the school. I also served as Vice President of SGA, which is Student uh, Government Association. They are a group of people who serve as the voice of the student body. The last opportunity given was me earning this title, Miss Southwestern. Being Miss Southwestern means representing Southwestern in everything you do. With this title, I have found that the way I am seen is magnified. People not only see me as a Christian, but with, that, with this title, I am also looked upon as the queen of student body. This has helped me to also recognize my royal status as a child of God. Because I am often looked up to, it has taught me to pay, to play, to pay close attention to everything that I do and make sure that I represent my status as the daughter of a king. With God as my father, I am not only Miss Southwestern, but I, but I am also a royal priesthood, as stated in 2 Peter 2 and 9. Now we come to the question, who are we in God's eyes? We are all a queen. I believe with that, it is important for each of us as, ch as children of God to recognize our status as royalty. So often we measure ourselves by others and how they see us rather than using the word of God to determine who we are in the, in the eyes of God. If we focus on the word of God, we would realize that we were all woven together in the womb with a purpose. Isaiah 63, 62 and verse 3 lets us know, 
that we will be a crown of splendor in the hands of the Lord that tells me that not only in the hands of God on us, not only is the hands of God on us, but we have a crown that we must wear. Another vital verse is 2 Corinthians 5.17, which states, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. The new things has come. This lets me know that we are no longer of this world. We are brand new in Christ. And so we must live our new selves as, so we must live in our new selves as daughters of the King. So my sisters, I encourage us all to live in our royal status. Now, let us answer the question, why do we need queens in our society? That's a big question because not many of us think about it. We need queens to represent Christ. The Bible tells us to let our light so shine that men, so let our, the Bible tells us, let's, sorry, <laughs> let our light so shine before men that they may see our great works. We are to shine to Christ. We are needed in the society because the world belongs to Satan, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. The verses that leads up to that lets us know that if we hide the gospel, that it is hidden from the lost. What that tells us is that we have a job in the world to showcase the gospel. We are living vessels, and it is our obligation as queens to live in a way that the world sees Christ. This reminds me of the text that we are focusing on today. Queen Esther, had, Queen Esther was a great example of why we need queens in the society. To be a queen in the Bible days, a woman had to, deter, had to remain pure. She had to live before she became a queen, as if she was already one. And that's, a, that's also another big problem. We're so focused on what others think instead of what God thinks that we don't we don't pay attention to our everyday walk. It's important for us to pay attention to our everyday walk because people are looking up to us and we have to make, make way for those who are looking up to us so they can know that I should be pure, I should be living as Christ wanted me to. She had to live life before she became a queen as if she was already one. She had to live this way because queens were chosen not only by their present appearance but also based on how they lived prior. And that's also a problem because we're, we want people to think of us as a queen because of how we look, which is why we wear dresses up to here, or which is why we uh, curse or do different things like this where wear all types of makeup when you're, you're not beautiful because of the makeup or the clothes you wear, but because God's in you. They had to be a virgin and had to look a certain way. So young ladies, don't let these guys tell you you're beautiful and sweet talk you because most guys only want to take your virginity. And that is something precious. That is something that we should all want to say for that one special God that God made it very clear. Your husband is to get that. So among all of the women that wanted to be queen, the king, cho the king chose Esther. That tells me that she not only looked the part, but she also lived the part. Then upon becoming queen, there were some things that a queen just did not do. A queen never approached the king because either setting an appointment, without either setting an appointment or becoming summoned by him or by him to come. Now this is what brings me to the importance of Queen Esther. News got to Queen Esther that they were trying to kill her people, and so she approached the king and he granted her wishes. This is exactly why we need queens today. It was because of her status and reputation that kings showed her favor. It is important that we have the same reputation and that so that we have the same reputation and status so that the Lord can show us favor. When we live our lives and prepare ourselves to live a life of royalty, God notices. He notices, and so when we go to him with our request, he knows us, and so King Jesus grants our request. So, when, so with all of that, I say, let us all live on our royal status so that our king can show us favor, 
So with that, I want to leave us with this. If you do what you've always done, you will get what you always got. So with that, I say if you have, no, if you have not tried Jesus, I say let us all start living as queens and try King Jesus. And now I'd like to perform a monologue entitled, How Could You Not Want Me? How could you not want me? How could you sit there and see all that I am and all that I can do for you and not want me? Is it possible you've been abused by so many past relationships? You don't know a good thing when you see one? Maybe you don't know who I am. Worse yet, maybe you don't know who you are. You must not know who I am because there would be no doubt in your mind who it was you wanted. So I'll tell you who I am. Not because I necessarily have to or even have the time, but because you need to know. You need to know so that one day when you look back over the course of time and realize the nature of your loss, you will not be able to look at anyone, including me, with a blank expression of confusion upon your face. I am the epitome of womanhood. Strength and honor all my... Strength and honor all my... Clothes. I am royalty who has to settle for the lowly things that this world has to offer. You see, my father, yes, my father, his name is King Jesus. That makes me a royal queen. I have royal blood running through my veins. I am heir to the throne, and you don't want me. You have decided to go to another culture to find your soulmate. But how can someone mate with your soul when they don't even know who you are? I am the perfect mate for you and your soul, and your soul will forever thirst until you find the real thing you need to quench your desire. But I'll wait. Not because I have to, mind you. Not because I have no other alternative. But because you're the one. I'll wait. Because when you get through with the charade of becoming a ready, you need a place to lie your head. And with a torn heart, weary soul, and tears in your eyes, you'll look deep into my eyes and say, my God, how could I not have wanted you? And I'll look deep into your eyes and say, I don't know. Thank you, ladies. Wow. You see what Southwestern can do? That was great. Thank you. Southwestern is empowering our girls and young men to do what this society demands and needs from them. Thanks again. Now. There are several of you who might be in the audience who are graduates of Southwestern. I want you to come up to the front if you can. Are there any of you that are graduates of Southwestern Christian College? Now see that we don't know how blessed we are. <laughs> That's a future, this is a future. <laughs> what we wanted to do was we wanted uh, Dinah to pass out these corsages to give everyone who has graduated from Southwestern corsage. Let's give them a hand. Thank you so much, ladies. Southwestern is empowering our kids to do and to be what they need to be in this society. Now, another announcement I'd like to make, but just by way of announcements, we have a writer among us. And I want to let her share with you just a little information about an upcoming event that I think we might, as ladies, want to attend. Good morning, everyone. My name is Annette Williams, and I'm a member of the Church of Christ in Lindale. And as Sister Tillman said, I am a writer, among many other things that I try to dibble and dabble in. But I come to you this morning because I'm going to move this. This is a little low for me, and I'm having to strain my neck. But I come to you this morning because I've written this book, and I brought a copy of this book with me. And it's called Millicent Bradford's Adoption Story. 
Adoption and child placement is a passion of mine because I have worked with uh, a couple of adoption agencies here in this city for quite some time. But more so because there are over 500,000 youth who are in protective custody across the state. And more than half of those children are African American. And African American children are children who are biracial mixed or biracially mixed with African American are the least likely to be placed. That means that they will languish in foster care until they are 18. Now, does that mean that that's a good thing? No, it doesn't. What that means is that they have a place to stay, but it does not mean that they are receiving the parenting that they necessarily meet, need to make them viable individuals in society. So in this book, uh, this book depicts the life of a biracial child and her journey through the foster care system. And primarily what happens is she becomes an adult, she marries, and then some of the sexual abuse and other abuses that she experienced as a child surface when she marries, and you know what I'm talking about. So that makes for a very difficult marriage for her. And as she processes all of her feelings in this therapy session, we present that to you in a stage production. So my theater group and I have traveled to Washington, D.C. this summer, and we presented this uh, at a theater. We are scheduled to present this production in Atlanta, Georgia on October 10th. We have a Houston production at the University of Houston, which I would love for you all to support. My daughters are here, and they have flyers regarding that event, and you can purchase your tickets on eventbrite.com. And then we are also presenting at Southwestern Christian College November 24th excuse me, November 24th for the lectureship. Now, the other piece that I want to say very quickly about this is we have, when these folks, and I just have to break it down that way, when these folks grow up, they don't grow up primarily healthy. That's not to say across the board. Without some type of intervention, it is very difficult for them to live productive lives. And so the abuse and neglect that she carries around affects everything that she does in this life, all of the decisions that she makes. And some of you may have been victims of abuse and neglect. And if you need the help, we're going to show you how to get that help in this production. I want to thank you, Sister Tillman, for allowing me to come and just share these words. And again, my daughters are here with the flyers regarding the Houston show. And mark your calendars for the Southwestern Christian College show, which is November 24th, of course, at Southwestern Christian College. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Now, doesn't that sound like something that we would be interested in attending, ladies? So stay tuned. Now, we just want to thank everyone for coming to class and continue your Bible reading every day. Can you stand for prayer, please? Sister Wanda Como.